The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi everyone, Thursday, November the 11th, and thank you to all the vets out there. We absolutely do appreciate everything that you've done for us. And I want you to say that the uh, markets at this particular point are very uh, individualized. We're looking at the Dow yesterday having pulled back from the all-time high of 36565 and this is 8 a.m., 8.06 a.m. in the morning, uh, recording the show to be replayed at 10, my, my usual time. Um, what we're looking at is within the context of Chapman Wave methodology, we had that tiny little doji candle on Monday. At the open, the market suddenly shot up and, and then started a reversal. And most of the day, it, that high that was made at 36,565, that, that couldn't be retested, the market kept failing. And the following day, <coughs> excuse me, Tuesday, we had what I call a Chapman Wave Roman candle, just a small one, where there's a long wick where it opens, makes a fractional uh, wick, a little tiny move to the upside, pulls back sharply, but then closes a half to um, two thirds off the low of the day. And what happens is if the next day there is a trade that lasts a certain amount of time in a shorter time frame, um, in this case, in halfway into the lower wick, there's a real good chance that not only will you test the low of the day, of, in this case of Tuesday, but you go lower and certainly we did. Uh, we went to the 30, 35.960s. Uh, well, what we're looking at here in the futures is that the Dow futures are up only 33 points at 36,025. Is this really a turn down where we've seen a progression of a small candle, going back to the continuous contract, the Dow itself, a small candle and then a pullback? That's usually, in this particular case, that was like almost a halfway market with a doji candle, a little plus sign, followed up the next day going into um, Friday and then Monday's high, and then it turns around. Then it became a reversal candle. But look at this. The MACD, the move, daily MACD is very strong. Stochastic still above 82% has pulled back sharply from the 90s to the 82% level. On balance form, the blue line, which I always treat as very, uh, with a lot of respect. Let's put it this way. Let me just show you something here. Look, this is daily request failed. Well, we'll get it in right now. INDU. Look at that. Uh, no, this is not. This is the dark news cloud cover, which we're about to start putting in for a new one right here. So let me just do that. Wasn't the, this wasn't the chart that I was looking at. So right here, there's a chance that we start to get bad news, and that bad news impacts the market. You can only keep going down in the market when there's consistent bad news as starts off maybe once a week and then twice a week, and all of a sudden every day you're talking about it. And we don't, we don't even know uh, just yet uh, what um, is it going to be interest rates. Is it, going, it doesn't seem like it's interest rates at this particular point. Is it going to be crude oil? Is it going to be um, the containers now that we're finding out well, stuff that has to be thrown away because the containers create mold after a certain period? There's just a bunch of things going on. This is political. We don't know. We'll find out soon enough. Now, what I do want to show you is, so that was there. So that is there. Ay, ay, ay. Where did I put it? Let me see if this is the one. No, okay, that's the one I just showed you. There we go. So what I'm looking at here, and what I showed subscribers recently, is that if we start to look at these vertical lines with on-balance volume, look at this. Right here, we got the turn down. But is this a major turn down? We won't know for a couple of days. So it's just a hint to say this is one of those areas. Look, there's the green and went up very sharply. Look, before there's the pink and went down. So we're just looking at this and saying maybe this is the start of something a little deeper. And we won't know. We just won't know. Although it's a clue today that the Dow 
which is a real perfect mix of the general economy, is stalling. It's not having a, as good a move as the S&P futures. And if you look at the, I'm going to the continuous contract right now. Yeah, that's a peak C. I don't know if I can call it a peak C1, C2 just yet. But certainly we got that pullback in the E-mini uh, right there, that peak F top right there on the, um, at 12 o'clock on the 5th of November, we made a high in the S&P in the futures, and we've been pulling back ever since. If you look at the QQQ in the X100 trading view, we made a peak G in that little tiny doji candle in a 120-minute chart uh, also on the 5th. And what happened is that we pulled back very sharply. We had a little doji candle on Tuesday, Wednesday, big red. Uh, wait, whoa, whoa, that's Friday. That's Monday. That's Tuesday, that's Wednesday, and we haven't done anything yet because this is the 11th, so there's nothing there. Let's look at the NQ to see what we can tell as well. Uh, P peak C, <laughs> very unusual to make an all-time high top at peak C. Something's going to have to give this still residual strength. I don't know how that plays out. Now I could call it a peak C and a phantom peak C1. I don't want to do that just yet other than to say um, we have pulled back very sharply in the NQ from the same high that all the others saw. That was at a peak D in the 120-minute chart, and that was just before noon on the 5th. All right, let's go on, and we're looking at the IWM. The IWM is trading up $1.12 in pre-market, 238.47, and it had a sharp move from a peak F top of 244.46. That was on Monday. It's trading now at 238, not a big deal, six points, but it's the way it occurred and also that it's a, a leg D in the weekly chart. So let me just sum up real quickly in this particular area. I'll just add the SMHs. Was going to go short yesterday right at the open, and I thought, no, I've just got to give it because the Q's had to see maybe there's enough residual strength to go a little higher. I'm not going to make a big deal about it. We can always come back if we want to short the SMHs, the best index there is out there. Um, Makes a 305.95 high two days ago. Uh, that's actually three sessions ago, two, two market days here. You can see today is trading up 3.96 and 396.76. Yesterday it went from a 305.95 high, all time high of Mon of Tuesday down to a low yesterday of 390, I think it was 391 something, or 392. Two, oh, 291.55. And here it's bouncing five points. This is pretty good from yesterday's low. So there's still residual strength. Now, let me go through this very quickly. Gold had a spectacular move. It didn't hold most of the move, but it was a fabulous move. And even today, it's holding in the upper part of the wick of yesterday. It's up at 1860.12.3. I'd say if there was a break above 1837, 1835 to 1837, that will be really good action. Not only was there a break, there was a Chav Wave Cup formation with a left side, right side price tie match that was not to the base. That was the base that was made right there on the 29th of September at 1721. Instead, I had to move it along. We did get the one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. This is the reason why we went long, because there was such a nice move up in gold. And we went long to GPX, subscribe to both people, still long. And here we are trading at 1861. Nice breakout. Wait a minute. How on earth can you break out together with the tomorrow? And the floor is even strong now. We want it up 55 Because I told you a long time ago, you've got to think of all these different things separately now. They're not all linked. And it's the time. This is a complex market. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. Early edition, eight. Uh, what is it? Eight eighteen a.m. Uh, going to be replayed at ten o'clock. This is the Tiger Finance. This is the, uh, the opening call. Is my newsletter? I should remember what this is called. But yeah. So let's go on. We've got uh, the silver is up twenty two cents at twenty five point uh, twenty five point zero zero. Also, a nice move above the two hundred period moving average, meaning the twenty-four point sixty-one to twenty-four point thirty-seven area is in fact uh, support. Oh, let me just get this a little bit over here, so I can see questions that have come in. Are there any questions? Why did I just do chat, chat, chat? Gold, yeah, um, yeah. So that's important. A question about GOLD. In fact, I had it on my list today to look at. GOLD is a uh, barrack. Uh, gold core used to be ABX. Now it's called gold, or well, now it's called symbol G O L D. Had a big spike yesterday uh, to underneath the 20.86 200 period exponential moving average. Uh, unusual pattern, and this pattern says that there's now resistance, you can draw it quite easily, from there to there. That's the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. So, how gold, that is G O L D, uh, uh, ABX, Barrick Gold, um, can break above and hold the 20.90 to 21.30 area is going to important, be important. It's up 37 cents. Yeah, this is nice. The weekly chart, um, let me, I did this, didn't quite finish it last night when I was looking at it. A number of gold stocks. Uh, we're along the GDX. So that's the gold mines. Yeah, that weekly chart is absolutely starting to improve. The MACD is good. The histogram is, has, has gone positive. Stochastic's very slow in turning up, but it is making higher highs and higher lows at 36%. The on-balance volume is good. This needs work. It might have to fill the gap in you know, maybe at 20 a little bit. But I think that this is starting to turn to the upside. And that's good. The, the um, monthly chart needs a lot of work. Let's just go back. We want to look at the uh, um, high-grade uh, high copper. Nice green candle today. It's up 0.07 to 4.40, but it's in a rectangle formation until copper starts actually trading 
for three to five days, above 4.44, goes into the 4.52 or higher area. It's just kind of stuck. I always like to do this together with wood. These are the international clues for me. Wood is the iShares Timber and Forestry ETF, struggling. It's at 84.99, just keeps making the H pattern uh, sideways in uh, rectangle formation in the weekly chart. So the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF together with a uh, copper, high grade copper says international slowdown a little bit here in the economies. Okay. Now let's just get to this out of the way. Dollar again. Dollar is trading up 13 ticks at 95.01. I am calling this a leg C in the daily, leg G slash C in the weekly. Higher highs and higher lows. You've got to think that the trend is still to the upside. And that's very important. Makes the 9440 uh, area on the dollar index key support. And 9520s. Uh, that's going to be the clue. Can it break above the 9520s? That'll be important. I just want to show you EUR. Wow, I didn't want to take too much time yet. EUR USD making lower lows in the dreaded H pattern. Remember, we drew this in ages ago uh, as a clue. The Chapman Wave inside track uh, propellant zone has worked and worked, and now we are touching it once again. Wow, it really this is a leg after the downside. This is where you want to see. The euro finds some support to at least get back into the arch uh, pattern somewhere above 1.152, uh, and I said 1.146. Ah, this is not good. USDJPY, USDJPY. I just never know why it goes. Uh, why my chart suddenly disappears and it goes to the my uh, the back screen. I just I haven't figured. I I know why. I just haven't figured out how to resolve it. It's when the mouse moves in a certain direction. Okay. USD JPY has to break out of this down channel and is trading at 113.92. Uh, it needs to start trading at 114.34 and then push quickly to the 114.80 to 115.20 area. That'll be absolutely great action. So far, it's just stuck in this range. I'm forgetting the TLT. I'm not forgetting it. I want to get to it. TLT. <clears throat> Huge move to the downside yesterday after three days of the gap up continuation to just under 152 and now it's at 148.21, up a penny. Um, it's stuck in a range, and that's what I've been saying for a while. I think that yields are just stuck in a range. Um, they're not really going anywhere. They're just bouncing within it, making uh, people nervous one way or the other. But let's just treat it as a range bound and until uh, the VIX, sorry, until the TLT, the Lehman 20-year Treasury bond fund is able to trade, not just get there, but trade in the 153s with the yields much lower or break down and go back to the 144s with yields much higher. Uh, can we think that this is not just a trading band? And you have the cup formation. We went to 151.79 was the high of the 9th, 22nd of September. <laughs> Look at this beautiful left side, right side price time match. And on the 9th of uh, November, it goes to 151.77, two ticks away from the previous high. I just love the way these things, I mean, that's what keeps the fascination with the markets going. Uh, just quickly, I wanted to show you, this is obviously pre-market at 8.24. There's bound to be some news at 8.30 that will impact the market one way or the other. And you can see the rectangle formation since... Um, 5.20 this morning, the 10-minute chart shows the E-mini just stuck in a range between 4.61 uh, and this low right here of 4.655. I mean, that's the way it works. All right, sometimes it just goes into a hold, holding position. All right, now what am I missing? I did that, did oh, 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 the crude oil. Now, we went short for subscribers to opening call almost perfectly via the SCO. Uh, we went short at 12.75, and the low was 12.43. And uh, that was, we went short, at the 26 was the low. The very next day, we got it at 12.71. We took a little bit off. We had profit. Then we got stopped out for a little bit of profit. And then I had a quick trade uh, on Friday, I believe it was. Well, it's just a little bit. But I think that that top that we called right there, based on the Chapman methodology at peak E, I think that's a, a top that's going to hold in the short term for a little bit longer. So we could be seeing sideways movement. The crude oil is down 56 cents, 8.77. And I think we're stuck in a range. Until we break and close above 86.30, I think we're range bound. 
And I think this is going to last just a little longer. And then I think based on the technicals in the, both the weekly and the monthly charts, and then I think we try to attempt another big move. But at this particular point, digest the phase with the crude oil. Wow, I've covered just about everything I wanted. And uh, a, a couple of quick things that came in here. Could I look at Tesla? Sure, I could look at Tesla. Tesla gave a beautiful peak. G two dojis. I spoke, uh, we were on air when I did this. I said these two dojis, got to have respect for that. He made a 1243.49 was the high of the fourth yeah the fourth of uh, the fourth of November now people ask me you, you always talk about round numbers well there was a round number that you couldn't see because it was the low of the day of 1217 and the very next day it had a low of 1208.00 well it's broken and it says that the, the sell-off from that level makes this whole area of 1200 in, in Tesla really strong resistance. I suspect Tesla's got at least a short term, but look at the weekly. It's already made a leg E and potential for tomorrow at 4 o'clock Friday for it not to break about 12 49 And to, to, we have to conclude that this could be a peak E in the weekly chart. It's a leg in the month. Tesla trading at 10.99. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, hey, folks, we're back. This is the early edition, 8.30 a.m. It'll be this, this section, this segment will, of course, will be at 10.30. So what we're looking at here is that the Dow uh, futures are only up 24 points. The S&P futures are up a lot more, up 16. Um, the, the, the divergence between different stocks within the same sector, between the sectors themselves, between 
Uh, the uh, semi is running to an all-time high and then pulling back sharply yesterday. The QQQs um, holding quite well concerning what's going on. The uh, S&P uh, lately has been a little bit stronger than the Dow, but it has pulled back. Uh, the question came in, um, so did you mention the other day that you were short or something? Yes. Uh, we, just, to, just really briefly, just to say, uh, we, we managed to short the Dow uh, just uh, we did it once before, and then we, we, we back again, and we're short the Dow from uh, maybe 40 points on Monday from that gap up. We had I said to buy uh, uh, the long short position, um, and we managed to get it within 40 points of the Dow itself. Dow's all time high, so we have a little bit of a cushion. That's all you really. That's the reason why I like timing. I like to try to get the very edge, the outside edge. Everybody says, oh, nobody ever gets the top. Nobody ever gets the bottom. Uh, we want the middle. I always say, no, I try for the top. I try for the bottom. We got the exact low, the day of the low in March of uh, March the 6th of 2009. We do that all the time. We try to do that. We get tops. And even if they're only just brief, at least it gives you a hint of being able to say, at least I'm trying to control my risk. So, uh, and we got along on the very day of the low of March 23rd last year. We still long that diamond position, taken a little bit off. We got, we've got a core position, but we've traded in and out, short and long, short and long. So lately we just went short after taking off the longs, uh, just on the shorter term. And uh, we'll see what happens. So we've got a bit of a cushion, yes. We're trying to get short some other instruments, but we haven't done it. I could have done it yesterday with the SMHs. I just didn't feel comfortable because the, the, the power of the individual, like NVIDIA, et cetera, it just, you never know what's going to happen. But anyway, we'll see what happens. So just real quickly, GFI question in the uh, uh, Tiger YouTube. Um, yeah, GFI made a peak E around about the 18th, 19th of October, around about 10. It pulls back to the 8th. Bounces again, has a gap up yesterday. Now, the question should be, I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating for those of you who use Chapman Wave methodology, why do I have an F slash B? Well, this is a gray A because it's under the previous high, and you haven't got the technicals confirming anything. So it's a little bounce. And then what happens is if it takes out the previous high and hasn't gone below the starting point, of the run that gave it the buy signal to buy mode, and that would be under 7.75 on the 29th of September, where we started leg A, which became a peak A. If any pullback is above that, then any new high, recovery high that is, I, I treat it with respect. I say this could be a continuation of that previous peak, or it could be brand new, and there's nothing to do because it's saying good move to the upside, MACD hasn't crossed positive. Stochastic's still very weak at 45%. On balance volume is very good. Relative strength is actually improving. So there's a good chance it could be a brand new B. But I want to be ready for anything. And if I had to do vertical lines like this vertical line right here, which is confirming uh, highs with good technicals, and this high right here, which it says, huh, you could fail at any moment, maybe fill the gap, and then start move to the upside. This just says be a little cautious. This is a new recovery high. Use your other time frames. And lo and behold, we've got a leg B in the weekly chart where the MACD is starting to be strong. Right now, we've got an L saying long, meaning it's the weekly chart. That could change by Friday at 4 o'clock. But so far, this says good action, enough to say that the nine period has finally crossed positive after turning down way back in, uh, that was in June, June the week of the 25th, at 9.36 it turned down and then slumped to the sevens. So this is a good sign, the weekly chart, monthly chart says eh. But in the meantime, that's the way I like to, to look at it, and it makes this left side high of the week of the 6th of August of 10.34, an absolute, a, a, it can't be 10.34. 10.34. Oh, 10.34, and we're at 9.91. Yeah, at 10.34, a target to the upside. Um, so that's the way we look at it. And then this this gap says this should be key support. Right in the 9.50s, uh, there should be tremendous support. That's GFI, that's Goldfields. Uh, Goldfields is uh, South African, right? I think we, I grew up, uh, I grew up on the, as a teenager, on the East Rand, uh, between Johannesburg and the little mining towns that... Uh, the, the, the little vein that went from 
uh, Johannesburg. And uh, yeah, I think it was Harmony. I think Har I've got a feeling Harmony was in one of the towns near me. All right, so here we are looking at GFI. Question I had in the den was, could I look at, uh, here we go, um, KZIA. K, whoops, KZ. I, I keep typing the wrong thing. KZIA is um, Kazai, Kazia Therapeutics. Um, and um, Bob, uh, Dan, Dan says they're an Aussie, an Australian G, GBM oncology company who just initiated a phase two on child patients with GBM. GBM, GBM. I don't quite remember mm, uh, exactly what it is. Stock, stock price aside uh, for uh, <clears throat> positivity. Yes, absolutely. So you've got your left side, right side price time match. Look, it went from the high that was made at 11.99 for two, two days, 9.27 and, and the 28th of September. Pulls back sharply. This is a Chapman Wave Roman candle, but then it went above, which is very positive. And it went to down to the 950 area. And then in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, about 18 days. 1, 2, 3, 14, 15, 16, 17. In 17 days to the upside, it went from left side, right side to uh, a higher high. And that just says this whole area of 12, that's the area that is, is a magnet. And until it can break and pierce that, and hold in the 1258 to 1263 area, this is what you got to look at. And it could stay here for a little while longer as it, um, you parallel right there. Yeah, you know, left side, right side, exact. Look at that, beautiful. Um, right, so that's important. And A, B, this is leg C, uh, leg C in the weekly chart. This is definitely improving, but it is biotech. <laughs> Anything that can happen in biotech, let's face it, right? Okay. So now a couple of things I want to look at. So I did that Tesla. Tesla says uh, digestive phase unfolding. I want to go through a couple of things right now. Uh, should I do this? I'm going to do this as if it's 8.37 in the morning rather than 10.37. Glioblastoma. Uh, uh, oh, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, so now what I'm looking at is uh, DDD. Dave White says DDD is down sharply. Yeah. DDD's uh, 3D Systems Corporation, we had a huge move in this, um, and, that, and we just haven't touched it since then. Have I got that all written up? Oh, no. Don't. Yeah, there it is. Started along at $8.21 in November the 25th, 2020. Took a tad off at 9.30, tad off at 10.68, tad off at 27.41, a 233% gain. Added back a little bit and uh, then took off at... Uh, and we took over at 147, so we lost just a little bit, and we made huge, huge, huge gains. Haven't touched it. It just, just, I will get back into 3D systems at some point. Right now, it's still got that, it's still got the patina of all that Kathy Wood buying from earlier on. I want that to disappear, and then it'll be shooting again. 3D system, DDD, trading at $26.57, $1.47. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm over back. So Sophie, uh, Sophie, Sophie uh, Technologies, Inc., member of uh, um, member of digital financial service company, member of uh, digital financial with mobile applications, I had a spectacular move uh, going from the 15s uh, in October all the way to 23.63 all-time high with a little sign and chapter wave silence, doji candle the following day after that high was made. Pulls back sharply to yesterday's low, uh, just under 20, and then comes out with earnings. And now it is at 23.77 pre-market, up 3.31. Well, that, if it, if, if it opens at this level, it goes to a new recovery high. Now, you remember what I discussed? I say that trend lines, I know a lot of people talk about trend lines. I've used trend lines ever since I began this when I used to use, when I used to get those huge books, the chart books, and I would get my ruler out. I remember sitting in the lodge in the, at the, at where, when, my, when I would take my son skiing and uh, I would ski just, I hate cold weather. So I'd just ski a little bit and then I'd go to the lodge and sit there in the warm fireplace. And I would uh, do, go through these charts with a pencil and, and rulers. And I'd be drawing there. And so I drew trend lines for, I mean, for decades, right? And one of the things I developed was this chapter wave inside track repellent zone or propellant zone. And what I'd said is a very long trend line, just the mere fact that you're moving sideways in time, you're going to take that out at some point. What you want to see is a price move that goes decisively above the trend line. And then... You've got this whole thing that says this now becomes your support level. Well, let me move this. This is the weekly chart of, of SOFI. Let me just move this a little bit here. Right there, it was looking fantastic. Woohoo! We're above that trend line on a weekly basis. The MACD is improving stochastics finally over 80% and 80, uh, it was like 81% there. On balance volume is starting to improve. You've crossed nine period over the 14 period moving average, absolutely great. And then all of a sudden this week, <clears throat> kaboom, it comes back down. And what does it do? It tests that support. So, so uh, Sophie, if it's able to, um, I just don't know how they pronounce, I've not heard it pronounced, uh, uh, maybe I have, but I haven't taken note. Um, but what's really important is if a tr even if by Friday, even if the, the pre-market um, three and a, three points move turns out to be by the end of the day just a one and a half point, it goes to 22.70. Let's say the close today, and then tomorrow it holds 22.10 or 21.90. Doesn't go further than that, just because of whatever market conditions or. It's still using this as your key support. 
keep that in mind. And look at the week, the monthly charts. Monthly charts, well, it's, it's a novice. This is an IPO just about a year or so ago in the tens, having skyrocketed up into the 28s. Um, and, but it's attempting to get out of the downtrend line. But remember, a downtrend line is just one key. It's just one little piece of information. It isn't, oh, my God, we're out of that. Now we're on our way back to the highs. No, no, no. There's a lot of work that has to be done to maintain that. This is just a guidance this is a little, it's a little line. It's one little trend line. So keep in mind, yes, it's broken above, but it hasn't so far held above in the monthly chart. Monthly chart, I would like to see in January that this is not only above uh, 24.50, but it's actually starting to close in the 26 to 28 area. That or higher. That would be fantastic action. You do not want to see this trading back in the 18s and holding there for one full week because it says, nah, it's stuck until there's another initiation because it does have this characteristic. Remember, char look at the character of the stock that you, I, I love it when I have, oh, I should have written, I did write it down, I can't find it right now. A whole bunch of stocks that actually made two or three peak Ds. When I know they are D stocks, it means great. But when I, when I know that they make cup formations, uh, and then they can't hold the cup formation, but they keep pulling back. I say, well, maybe I have to wait for a second cup formation. But in the meantime, this is looking so far is in a way more positive and absolutely as an IPO that's become, I, I can't say a favorite because a favorite would have said it's gone to leg B in the month. It's had all this time, about eight, nine months to go to a new high and it hasn't. But I think it will. So Facebook. Uh, questions I have had about Facebook. I don't know about you, but I'm going to call it Facebook Meta Platform. So it's very interesting. Years ago, it must be 12 years ago, maybe uh, maybe more, maybe less. I don't know, but so let's call it something like I remember my son, uh, his field is in the technology area. Um, I remember him talking about the Meta Universe. Meta Universe, I would say to him. Yeah, he says there are people that are buying houses buying furniture, buying all sorts of things in this meta-universe. Meta-universe? Yeah. There, there were people, uh, he had a, a, a colleague that um, had developed this whole thing uh, with the meta-universe. And um, he said, yeah, we all, it takes, you remember, I, I've spoken about this, that certain things take a certain amount of time to become the norm. When people, 17 years ago, when Prius came out or whenever that was, I said, oh, it's the future. You will never have a gas-related cause. I said, it takes any medium 40 to 50 years to get the infrastructure to the point where another area that was the, the prime area becomes not eliminated, but it disappears, and the other one becomes the force. Well, here we are, nearly 20 years later, and what, electric cars? Yep, there's a big explosion of electric cars, but oops, you shouldn't have said that. There's a, um, an exponential uh, buying of uh, electric cars, but in fact, um, it's 8%, maybe 10% of, of all cars being bought. Yeah, that'll change, and it's 20 years. So remember, that take, things take time. So this whole meta universe that, that I heard about, didn't know a thing about, so now they call themselves Meta. He only did that because he wanted to change the whole image of Facebook. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a brilliant guy. I mean, this is a guy who went to Harvard and came out, uh, Zuckerberg, and then he messed up completely in that first period. And then he said, what? No, this will be, be a profitable company. And wow, he just turned it around uh, all-time high uh, in the three, what was all-time? All time high, 384.33. I remember when it was trading at 18 after it failed as an IPO, came all the way down. So, yeah, he'll be back. But right now, it's in a big digestive phase. So, uh, NVIDIA, question about that. Yeah, NVIDIA is trading uh, up 10 at 304, made an all time high of 323.10 at a peak D. It had a round number 314. That's the 314 is going to be the area that needs to close above that and says, okay, that's now negated. It can try for the all time high. I'm watching this closely because it's a peak D so far. In the, in the daily, but the MACD, everything about it is extremely positive, except the on-balance volume has, has failed miserably. Um, and relative strength is one of the strongest I've seen in a long time. A leg E in the weekly and a leg F, I'm calling it F for now, uh, but that could be F slash B, 
in the monthly chart NVIDIA trading at 304.59 up 10 right now. Watch this closely and the semiconductors. The question I had about the... Uh, oh, choo -doo, choo -doo, choo. Uh, don't forget next week you've got Larry Preservento's all-day webinar. I believe it's Wednesday. Uh, what did we have here? Uh, oh, so a couple of questions about the VIX index. So let me just do this. The reason why I thought today we could see some kind of a bounce, it doesn't have to be strong, but a bounce that at least alleviates the downside, is that that VIX index had gone from 14.73 yesterday's ninety in the quickest time, and yet the downside, I mean, they dropped wild from their highs. So that just says to me, this is going to be a process. Turn down is a process. I'll be back in a moment. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading market and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So, uh, uh, in the den, I mentioned that Nike uh, for uh, Dan is one of his uh, go to uh, benchmarks for looking at the Dow. But it made 179.10 NKE is, is, is the symbol. But it, uh, two days before the high, it made 172 round number low. If Nike starts to trade above 172, it says, hey, you could even get to the 176 area, maybe even touch that peak G at 179.10. But watch it closely because if there's a weakness, in the next two days, and it suddenly starts to drain the 167, 165 area. Yes, I agree with the Dow that it's, it's made a top, at least short term. No weekly chart, we have to wait for that. So that's that. Now, just before you go to, uh, before you go to uh, Tommy O'Brien for the 9 a.m. show, uh, Docu, yes, it's up to at 258, uh, zero, zero, round number low. 
um, a DocuSign, electronic sign, only made a peak C in the monthly chart, but it's taking a long time to get back to the all-time high in the 300s. It's showing you 258 right now. Hit the 200 period exponential moving average. Be careful. <clears throat> a lot of these fantastic stocks just need time to consolidate. They'll be back on your... I, we're building up a cash position. We want stocks like this, but it's made a peak C1, C2, in the daily chart, peak D high that was made right there, and it keeps making lower lows and lower highs. Just be careful out there. So just real quickly, I'm going to say that um, this is for the 10, when this is re -record, this is recorded and played at 10 o'clock, at 11 o'clock, before you go to Larry, um, uh, Larry Pesavento, watch to see if the Dow is starting to trade. I suspect there should be some kind of an oversold bounce, but just a bounce. If the Dow is holding... Um, not, I'm going to make it 130 this afternoon. If the Dow is holding a plus 60s or more, it says, yep, you could have at least a decent uh, up move to the close. If it's minus 40s or even more uh, after uh, 132 o'clock, it says, no, not yet. We're still in this big digestive phase in the near term. But the monthly charts, we, weekly and monthly, we have to wait until Friday's close to see where it goes. So I'm anticipating that this is a, a digestive phase going through all the different sectors and that you've just got to be somewhat careful and just it's what gold and the dollar going in the same direction that's very unusual see you tomorrow have a great day and thank you to the vets and stay tuned for from your mind what is coming up building wealth trading in the stock market seems